How's it going YouTube? Nick Novak back for another video today. It's a very windy day so there's not much we're going to do today. Just kind of check every, all the animals and everything which we'll do that at the end of this video. I actually just did it but I'm going to put it at the end because I thought you know while I'm driving I was thinking why don't I make a video about running those custom yearlings that I do. I've had a couple people ask me questions about it um, and kind of how it works so I thought I'd go into detail about that. So what I mean by that is I run custom cattle, which means I run cattle for a feed yard. They own the cows, they send them to me, I run them on my grass, they use my water, and I take care of them as long as I have grass. And so let's do an example here, and I'll put letters on the screen so you can see. So say I have a 100 acre, 100 acre pasture. I can run five acres per yearling. So that means I'm gonna run 25 yearlings as soon as the grass starts to get green. So I'm going to say turn out June 1st. I turn them out June 1st. They, I run them all the way through June and all the way through July. So say 60 days, okay? The feed yard's gonna pay me for 60 days of running those cattle. The feed yard's gonna bring a semi with the you know yearlings on it. I'm going to unload them into my pasture and the semi is going to leave. And yes, a lot of people run cattle on grass for longer than 60 days, but I'm just using it as an example. So the feed jar pays 85 cents a head a day. So 85 cents times 25 head is $21 every, $21 and 25 cents every single day. If I run for 60 days, at the end of the 60 days when they pick them up, I'm responsible for having a corral to catch them and help them helping the guy load them from my corral into the semi after 60 days you're gonna make twelve hundred and seventy five dollars what's nice about this is as a beginner rancher it's very hard to start because you don't have capital up front to buy say 20 cows at three thousand dollars a piece so to get by with these yearlings it's really nice because you get an automatic paycheck as soon as they leave your grass. If you have a drought, you can run them for 60 days. If you don't have a drought, you can run them for 150 days. You know, and every single day you run them, you make more money, if that makes sense. So I know a lot of people are gonna say, but what about death? What happens if you lose, if you have 25 and you lose five? Well, that's the feed drift responsibility, which is also really nice as the beginner rancher because you don't have any risk in it. You know, you don't want them to die. I mean, by all means, I don't want the feed jar to lose money on it, but it's very nice to know that I'm in a low risk, but high reward, and by my high reward means I'm getting a paycheck no matter what. Like I've said, I'm responsible for the care, the water, the grass, the fence, whatever else you want to call it. But the feed jar, <coughs> excuse me, reimburses you for the mineral so if I buy 10 bags of mineral at $10 they're gonna give me hundred dollars on that check to reimburse me for that mineral if I have to doctor a yearling with Draxon um, you know I just write down okay I use 70 mls um, I've doctored 10 of them I use 70 mls they're gonna pay me out for the Draxon I use and so really there's zero risk involved and you make money and I know a lot of people say Oh, you can't make a land payment doing that, you know, if you only if you only run that many. Well, that's not what I do. And one thing I strive for, my wife and I do, is we want our our property to pay for itself. And so, let me just go into depth real quick about my operation and how many I have and how much grass I use and just kind of give you guys an example of how much I'll be making this year off my yearly. So I know a lot of people don't like talking about this, but I think it's very informative for people because you know the average age of a farmer rancher is like 62. Um, I'm 24, my wife's 24, um, we have two little girls, and you know I'd love to see younger people stepping into that uh, that ranching and farming role because it's kind of come becoming a lost um, cause almost. I mean it's it's kind of crazy. Um, but anyways, the feed yard pays me 85 cents a head a day. That's the going rate for the feed yard. Um, my dad actually manages the feed yard. So that's how I have it in there. But 
if you live in Nebraska, I know my dad sends cattle to Montana. We're in Kansas, you know, so people will send cattle anywhere if you have grass and the price just depends on making it, them making it so they make a little bit of money, but you also get to make money. And I'm happy with the 85 cents ahead today because of the risk that I don't have to take. Um, I know I'm making money, not losing it. So 85 cents ahead today, I have 80 head out here. So I'm making $68 a day. I just went back, looked at the calendar. We turned them out on May 2nd and it is June 18th today. So they've been out for 47, 47 days. So I take that $68 times 47. As of today, they owe me $3,196. Um, and that's not including the mineral. Um, let me look back at my notes here. I've fed nine bags of mineral and I've doctored one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those yearlings at seven mLs. So they, they're gonna owe me, you know, as of right now, 56 mLs of Drax. And I keep a running list on my notes just to let them know that, you know, which ones are doctored so they know when they get back to the feed yard if there's something that, you know, they're needing to doctor it again, they know and they have record of. So we had a lot of rain coming up in May and we could turn them out early. So May 2nd, we turned them out this year. Last year, we turned them out June 6th. So I gained almost 34 days of grazing because of having rain. And that's what's really nice about these yearlings is I gained another 30 days from last year. And last year I ran them for 91 days. We turned them out June 6th and then we ran them for 91 days. This year we're already at 47 days and we're not even through the middle of June yet. And so I could run them for 150 days. Let's say 150 days times 68. That's $10,744. That is a lot of money not including the mineral and all the Draxon, but that's a lot of money that you're guaranteed. Like I know, okay, I'm gonna try to keep these yearlings out for 100 days, which I know the weather plays a big part in that, but say they're out for 100 days, I'm making 6,800 bucks, which is really cool to know you're gonna, what you're gonna make. And yes, I know $6,800 doesn't make a land payment, but they're just on one part of my pasture. You know, I still have another 120 acres roughly that I use for my cow calf pairs. I have horses that I have. Um, I have five acres here up front of my house that I have 10 bottle calves that should be making money, which I can make a bottle calf video too. Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. I think that'd be a good video also. But so I have a lot of different moving parts on our ranch. And, you know, it's really nice because I know what I'm gonna make on that pasture. I know roughly what I'm gonna make up front on my bottle calves. I know what I'm gonna make in my calving pasture for my cows. And so, just to have a little bit of diversity, you know, I don't want all my eggs in one basket to where if we have a rough year and say I have 20 cows and I can only graze them for 60 days. If you're feeding them for 300 days out of the year, you're not making much money. And if all my eggs are in that basket, it's just hard to, you know, be successful when you put all your eggs into one thing. I'm a firm believer in having your hands in a little bit of everything, but not in a, as much stuff that you can't handle it. But I wanna have, you know, three or four things that my hand's in that I'm really good at, I know what I'm doing, and I'm not trying to sound cocky, but you know, things that I feel comfortable doing that I know I can make a little bit of money here, 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 and in total, it, it can make my land payment. So, to wrap things up, I know I've been rambling on, I don't know if it's made sense to you guys, but running yearlings for, you know, a feed yard, maybe a big ranch around you, you know, weans a lot of cattle and they take them to their feed yard, but their feed lot, sorry, um, it's a lot cheaper to run cattle on grass in the summer than to feed them out in the feed yard. Yes, they gain more weight in the feed yard every day, but you're talking around $4 a day, you know, to feed them every single day at the feed yard when they can gain, you know, probably two thirds of what they gain at the feed yard on grass or maybe just a touch less 
for a quarter of the price, you know? So there's always gonna be places for you to do that. You just have to call around, you know, ask people, call your big ranch local, buy, I mean, call a feed yard, call a grow yard, call anybody, call anybody because I guarantee you, you can find somebody that is willing to, to work with you on that. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be the video. Um, the first part of the video, I went ahead and checked all my other animals, and so I'm gonna insert this on the back of this video so you guys can kinda see um, where my yearlings are at. We did a cattle drive on Saturday. I moved the yearlings yesterday. It's been a, kind of a crap show, super windy um, the last two days, so that's why I figured I'd make this video today to get, get you guys some content, but also kind of an informative content so you know um, kind of what I do and kind of one of my five eggs I have in the basket. So we'll catch you guys fixing this gate. First order of business is this gate has bent over a little bit. So I'm gonna take off these bolts right here and just straighten her up so that, that so this gate stays. Perfect. Now she's in. I've never seen these kind of locks before. Um, but when we moved here, on probably five of the 10 gates that are around here that were left, those were on it. And uh, they're pretty handy. I don't know if, you know, it would hold up, you know, if it was a high pressure place, but in and out of a pasture, it's perfect. They don't have to take off the chain. So like I said, it's pretty windy again today. Um, probably not gonna get to a whole lot of projects just because you can't get a lot done in the wind. It's kind of not very motivating. I'll just say it like that. Um, but I did end up moving those yearlings to this front pasture right where those open cows were at and my pears were at. On Saturday morning, my dad, my uncle, and my cousin and I, we had a little cattle drive. We drove them to our big pasture three miles away horseback that was a good time I rode Boone which is my horse uh, my cousin's been riding him he kind of breaks horses and he's he was broke he's a three-year-old but you know just kind of getting some more experience they have a little grow yard where they where my uncle lives at so just kind of getting him acquainted to the loader the tractors loud noises um, the flag stuff like that where for me I don't really have a lot of that going on here so it was good to get him some exposure. We did the cattle drive, drove him there and back. Probably put five miles on him. He didn't skip a beat. You know, he needs some grass. But, uh, and we'll go take a look at him if I can find him. They're in that little 15 acre horse pasture. So they're, who knows where they're at. Anyways, we're going to go check on these yearlings. I had to move their water and a couple other things. So we'll see if they're figuring it out. Um, so, let's drive through this gate. Okay, so as I'm pulling up here, looks like they're all up here by the water. That is good. I like how they're still, because it's only a dual hot wire right here between them and this middle pasture and the pasture they've been on. So I'm glad they're all right here, which I say I hope they're all here. I didn't count them. So I probably won't be able to count them today just because they're kind of jacked up for me driving with my Jeep trying to get them in. But their water looks full, which is good. And we'll go check on their electric fence charger. Make sure everything's hot. Blinking green means everything's hot. If it blinks red, it means it's not. What I end up doing, because I have my hydrant right here, I'm not really set up. I, don't, I need to get some panels and whatnot set up here. I ended up putting a hot wire right here. So um, these cows, So these cows don't push on that water tank or push on this uh, hydrant. They all actually kind of walked up to me. So I'm gonna stand right here and see if I can't look at all their look at all their eyes. But uh, while we're waiting for them to work their way up to the water, let's see if I can't get food over here. He's a gelding right here. 
he's uh let's just say there's not much that faces him he's pretty laid back he has drive but he's kind of just like do 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 come here bud eating the wheat and the dirt all that grass in there he's pretty tame groceries he's been like I said at that grill yard with my uncle he uh, just been feeding him hay and he was there for two months so he wasn't underfed but they, he was working so it's good for him to get on get on uh, grass and let him gain some weight here's Sage I mean my wife's horse she's two she's a little stud muffin she looks good beautiful horse and then we got the two ponies over there if anybody's looking for some ponies, we're selling them. They're, uh, we got them a little too early for uh, uh, my daughter and sister, and they rode them a little bit, but not enough to make it, you know, worth our time and money to keep them, keep them along. So, I'm gonna try to sell them, keep these two big ones, and maybe get my daughter a big horse eventually. Got back in the truck here. We're gonna go check on those um, fall cows, which probably won't drive in there and look, but just make sure that they're in and not on the road. And uh, then cows that were open that we turned out, we had the cattle drive for, on Saturday for, and those pairs, we'll go take a look at them. There's a cattle guard to get in there, so it's just easier to look. I'll just pull in there, check their water real quick, and if they're around, look at them. If not, as long as they're in, they should be fine. water in there yep she's full still leaking a little bit my cement didn't hold as good as I thought it would but uh, like I said in the last video it's there's not enough um, water loss for me to drain it and potentially not let these cows have water for a day so we're not even gonna risk it but I see them cows they're off kind of over there Looks like they're all in. I don't see anybody out and you know, they're gonna stay together. I'm gonna go drive along the road to make sure also. But then just driving right here across the pasture, you can see the fall cows over there. And I haven't had any problems with them getting out. And we're, I'm really good friends with the neighbors that live right across the road. Um, on the other side of the pasture, they have never called me. And so I'm not even gonna drive over there. Um, if their water is off for some reason, they have a spring, so they're gonna have water regardless. And uh, instead of me going, bouncing my equipment through the pasture every single day, checking them, I try to check those every other day. Um, and they're a cow. And I, I should only have to check them probably once a week and they'll be fine. So just try to, you know, little things like that to help keep the cost down of those cows. The fuel, I mean, you know, not very much fuel going over there, maybe three or $4 every day. But in the span of a year, you know, that adds up. So that's why I only check those once a day. Once these cows get accustomed to this pasture, I'll probably just start driving by them on my way home from work and not even checking them either, you know, except every other day. And when I do, just check both um, sets and kind of go from there. But those yearlings, I need to check those every day, if not, you know, twice. Not check them twice, but my fence is not the best around that on around my whole entire pasture um it wasn't well maintained when, I, when we bought it you know i went through and tightened wires and whatnot but there's a lot of posts broken off so what we do is them yearlings need check you know every morning and then if i'm for some reason going to town um or my wife's going to town i always have her drive by the pasture or I'll drive by it, you know, on the way to town or the way on the way to go eat with friends or something like that, just to check because think about yearlings. 
if they get out and they start walking, they will walk 10 miles in a day or more. They're just young and kind of dumb, to be honest with you. But it's one of those things.